Hey everyone, welcome to a midweek sermon follow-up as we break down one or two thoughts from this past week's message, but then really focus more on the reading that we're doing this week that goes along with it. Yeah. And so these videos are designed to be a complement to the sermon. So if you haven't watched the sermon, if you've missed that, you wanna make sure you watch that first so you understand where we're coming from is we're not rehashing the whole sermon, we're we're doing the follow-up and and the readings are always picked to go along with the sermon and tie in but not just be a complete reiteration of the sermon. <laughs> yeah. um, so to start us off, any thoughts from the message? Any questions from the message? Or you want to dive into, this week we did Jeremiah 2, Revelation mm-hmm. 2, Romans 12, Philippians 3, and Colossians 2 and 3. Uh, and I think we're pretty much good to dive in. Again, like a lot of what we're going to talk about, like to understand it in its full context, watch the sermon yeah. if you haven't watched the sermon. Um, yeah, I think we're good to just dive in if you want to do maybe the first two, because yeah. you had some good thoughts when we were talking yeah. about the other day. So basically, as we're, as we're looking at this sermon, so the sermon was, you know, First Peter 1, 13 through 16, where he says, prepare your minds for action and being mm-hmm. sober minded. And so the emphasis of the message was, do we think rightly? Yeah. And then we went on, you know, what does right thinking look like? Mm-hmm. Why is right thinking important? Things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and what I see in scripture as we consider this idea of thinking rightly, Mm. I see three directions, Mm. three flows, whatever you want to use, but basically I see three ways in which we need to think rightly. And I don't mean ways as in like practical application, but ways as in relationships. Mm. And first and foremost, we need to think rightly about God. Mm. If we are not thinking rightly about God, if I'm not thinking rightly about God, I'm not going to think rightly about my relationship with you. I'm not going to think rightly about my relationship with my boss. I'm not going to think rightly about Mm. my relationship with unbelievers. You know, like if I'm not thinking rightly about God, Mm -hmm. everything else fails. Mm. And then within thinking rightly about God, second, you see, and I, I, can't really rank these because they each (laughs) affect the other one. You know what I mean? Like they're kind of like the flip side of the same coin. Yep. Thinking rightly about God, vertical, Mm -hmm. then thinking rightly about others, Mm -hmm. you know, horizontal, peer, we're all human, not like Mm. peer, like we make the same amount of money, we're the same job title, we're the same age, but humanity is our peer. Yeah. You know what I mean? So (laughs) I think rightly vertically about God, Mm. I need to think rightly horizontally about my peers, my fellow Mm. humans, and then I need to think rightly internally about myself. Mm. All of that in light of right thinking about God. Yeah. And so... If I have an overinflated or a under, you know, to the point where it's not just humility, but it's like self-abasement and, Mm. you know, either direction, I can wind up thinking improperly about myself because Mm. I don't think rightly about God. Mm. And I can think improperly about my relationship with you because I'm not thinking rightly about God. Mm. And so considering these three directions, I really think these chapters that I picked this week um, or, you know, was led to by the Holy Spirit in tying in with the message, mm. I think in all of them, you see at least one of those directions demonstrated. Yeah. And when you get to, you know, if you start with Jeremiah, mm-hmm. uh, Jeremiah chapter two, I mean, this whole chapter is about the consequence of not thinking rightly mm. about God. Mm. You know, you've got verse five where the Lord says, what wrong did your fathers find in me mm. that they went far from me? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, catch that, catch that detail, (laughs) right? Like, what was the end result? They went far from me. Mm. But what caused it? Wrong thinking about God. Yeah. You know, like, so wrong thinking about God caused their behavior Mm -hmm. to drift from God. Mm. You go on and it says, you know, uh, my people have changed their glory. Be appalled, O heavens, at this. Be shocked, be utterly desolate, declares the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, so they have mm. wrongly thought about me. Yeah. But then what's the consequence of that? And hewed out cisterns for themselves. Mm. So because I'm wrongly thinking about God, I'm now wrongly thinking about myself and my own ability to provide the water. I need. Yep. Right? Like <laughs> wrong thinking about God leads to wrong thinking about self, yep. which leads to disaster. Which he even says in there is like cisterns that cannot hold water. Cannot hold water. <laughs> he says uh, at one point he criticizes, he says, those who handle the law did not know me. Mm. Like it's just... Chapter two of Jeremiah is so much about wrong thinking. In verse 23, he even says, how can you say I am not unclean? Wow. Like God's like, (laughs) you can't miss the point this badly. 
But what is what is it? Yeah, it's wrong thinking about myself. Yeah, because I am thinking wrongly about God. Mm. And so Jeremiah two, I think, is really just a example of the the devastating consequences mm. of thinking wrongly and of not being prepared with a sober mind. Yeah, yeah, I think. I mean, there's so much, there's so much I want to say. I can't even wrap it up because I know we we keep it like, but like one of the things that came to mind is like when God first is establishing his nation, Israel, and he gives them laws and he tells them things like, don't, uh, you know, don't, don't inherit the ways of worshiping other nations, gods and inherit that as the way that you worship me. So like when I hear that, I'm thinking like, like culture can influence the way we think about God. Mm-hmm. And this is why God says like, don't have any other gods, don't have idols, don't have any of those, because you're going to start to think of me yeah. in that way, yep. which is wrong. Yep. And you're going to sin and you're going to move away from me and all those things. So, yeah. I reference Psalm 90 in the sermon, you know, satisfy yeah. us in the morning. Yeah. And then David, like the psalmist goes on to write, right, before our hearts forget. Mm. Like before we forget, yeah. before we start thinking wrongly, like satisfy us in the yeah. morning with your love. Uh, then you come to Revelation mm-hmm. 2 and Revelation 2 and Jeremiah 2 are very similar. And there was a reason why I said deliberately mm. start with those two chapters, because sometimes we, you know, we're like, well, I'll just start with Jeremiah 2. But then Revelation 2 is at the end of the Bible. I'll read that last. And so, yeah. No, no, I wanted I wanted that us one. to read Jeremiah yeah. 2 and Revelation 2 mm-hmm. first. Is in Revelation 2, you see three churches being addressed. One of them gets it right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in the church that gets it right, people should look for a series theme for this whole series. I'm not going to say what it is. <laughs> you got you to sign it. <laughs> but the, the church in Smyrna is doing well. Yeah, Jesus doesn't have any critiques for them. Mm-hmm. He's got encouragement for them. And in his encouragement, you should see a theme of this series. So look mm. for that. Uh, but then Jesus criticized his, his critiques, harsh critiques of the church in Ephesus mm. and the church in Pergamum. And then the church in Theotira too. And mm. there were so actually four churches. Yeah. And for three of those, the, the three churches that get negatively critiqued, it's the same thing. It's mm. you've abandoned your first love. You've forgotten your first love. You've abandoned right teaching. Mm. You know, the church in Ephesus, he literally says like, you have abandoned the love you originally had. Wow. Your mind grew cold. Yeah. You weren't thinking rightly, and so your behavior wound up not yeah. rightly. And then in Pergamum and Theotira, the, the critique is literally you tolerate false teaching. Mm. You are not thinking correctly. You are not sober-minded. Wow. You wow. Know, like, I, <laughs> I mean, that's the, the critique of yeah. God's people from the start. And so it's awfully arrogant of ourselves to say, mm. well, if the Old Testament in Israel didn't get it right and the New Testament churches didn't get it right— I'm the first generation that got it right. You know what I mean? Like, no, we have to be constantly vigilant yeah. that we're thinking rightly. And I think these two chapters really demonstrate their mm-hmm. devastating consequences when we don't. And I think reading the chapters too um, helps us to kind of analyze our own hearts. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because a lot of us, I mean, I don't know where all of you guys are at, but I know in my own life, there have been many times where I've gone through, you know, at first I'm, very passionate about the Lord and his word, but then I get busy and then things just start to become routine and I don't have necessarily the love that I had at first. I have now just a machine called Christianity. And that's what, you know what I mean? And this is why, so the sermon was about that we prepare our minds for action because we're in war, right? Mm -hmm. And I said that when we think wrongly, that opens the door for an attack, Mm -hmm. for an effective attack. Mm -hmm. Because I think we've all been there, like you said, mm-hmm. where we get busy, we get distracted, right? And what's the enemy? He doesn't say, like, good for you. This is a good thing. Yeah. That would be obvious. <laughs> That'd be too obvious. Yeah. What do we look at in the sermon? We look at the tactics yeah. of the enemy, right? What he says is, dude, I, I know you're busy. I know you don't have time mm-hmm. for God right now, but that's just a phase. Mm. Everybody goes through this. Mm. It, just get through these next three years, and mm. then you'll have time for God. Mm. And that's much easier for us to swallow. Yeah. And that's a much more appealing hook for us mm-hmm. to bite into. Mm-hmm. And what that is, is thinking wrongly. Yeah. Because if I think rightly about God and yeah. the lengths he went to for me, and I think mm-hmm. rightly about what my response should be to that, mm-hmm. it's, no, okay, it doesn't matter what season of life I'm in. Mm-hmm. I can never be too busy for God. Yeah. I cannot no. allow this to become mm-hmm. part of my, you know what I mean? So I think it yeah. all goes back to 
those that. subtle ways mm -hmm. that our thoughts just get diverted. And we yep. started off sober-minded. We mm -hmm. started off with minds prepared for action. Yep. And then we got distracted, we got lulled to sleep, we got whatever, and all of a sudden, we are no longer sober-minded. We are no longer ready for action. Mm. And our minds are not in the right place. I think the, a key word that you've used in your sermon is subtle. It's almost, I mean, you don't really honestly know. May, when you train yourself to actually be aware, you can actually yes. notice when, oh, I am not thinking rightly about this, or oh, I'm noticing that this thing is causing me to not view God correctly. It just flies way under the radar. Yep. And it isn't until a week later, two weeks later, a month later that you're like, why am I like struggling so much? And the whole reason was, well, something caused me to think wrongly about God, then about other people, and then about me. And then just like you were saying, the whole chain of events, which I think leads us into your next one of Romans. Romans 12, I, I honestly don't have much to say on this one. I mean, it's pretty because it's, clear. It's so straightforward. <laughs> it's so like, clear. Romans 12 starts <laughs> off with like renewal of your mind, which is directly tied to presenting yourself as a sacrifice to yeah. God. So Romans 12 starts off with, this is how you think rightly about the Lord. Mm -hmm. And then the whole rest of Romans 12 is, and so in light of that, here's how you think rightly about yourself. It says literally like, do not think more highly of yourself than you ought to. Yes. But think with sober judgment. Like, <laughs> so, like Romans 12, I don't have a whole lot to add to yeah, it because yeah. I, think it, I think it is one of the most biblically obvious discussions yep. of right thinking mm -hmm. in all three directions. To God, to myself, to others. Mm -hmm. Romans 12. Yep. So do you, so I do have a question about okay. Romans 12 says, therefore, just in case you guys don't know what it is, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, offer your bodies living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Verse 2, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. So what is renewal of your mind? Is it only right thinking about something? Because I can think rightly about something and still not have a changed life. But I would argue that's not right thinking. You think so? Would you say, okay, I am, uh, I'm gonna use an extreme example. Oh. Um, <laughs> but just to make my point, like I'm not trying yeah, to, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm not trying to offend anyone or anything, but I am- Just an example. I am in horrific physical shape mm. because I eat nothing but 20 Big Macs a day. Mm -hmm. Right, like that's all, I eat 20 Big Macs and I drink four gallons of Coke a day. Mm -hmm. That's my diet. Doctor says, dude, this is gonna kill you. Mm. You have to change your behavior. Mm. And I'm like, yeah, I know, I, I recognize this. I think rightly about this. I know mm. that proper nutrition will help prolong my life and turn mm. things around. Mm -hmm. But I'm just not willing to do that. Mm. Well, then do I really think rightly about it? Mm. You, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So I think if there's not transformational behavior, if there's yep. not a pursuit of it, mm -hmm. then we've bought the lie of the devil Yeah, that we are thinking rightly mm -hmm. because we think rightly. Yep. And so that was part of the message, right? It was like thinking rightly should lead to a readiness for action. Yep. So I can't claim that I think rightly mm -hmm. if I'm not ready for the action. Yeah. And when the action presents itself, if yeah. I'm unprepared and I'm unwilling to engage in it, mm -hmm. that'd be like a student saying, I know math. Yeah. And then when you give them the actual test, they fail. Mm -hmm. Well, then you don't really know it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. if you can't apply yeah. it and you're not applying it, mm -hmm. then do you really know it? Yeah. And Especially when you're talking about our response to an eternal God. Yes. Because and if I rightly yeah. think about God, mm -hmm. I will cast aside all my pursuits. Mm -hmm. To pursue him. Yeah. And that's the reason why I was asking. Mm -hmm. Because I think it's easy to read that verse and be like, okay, a renewed mind, I will have transformed behavior. So if I'm thinking rightly about something, I will automatically have a transformed life. Well, I could look at my life and be like, man, I'm still struggling with this, 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 and this. But I understand that it's wrong and I understand what God says about it. I'm understanding it rightly. Well, well, Where's the disconnect? Yeah, so you know what I'm saying. So like, so like, so like, is it is it a renewed mind? And you know what I mean. So like, well, I would say, but he doesn't say, he doesn't say, 
uh, what's he say? He says, be transformed by the renewal. Mm -hmm. It's an ongoing. Exactly. It's not a one-time thing. That's what I was trying to get at. Okay, I see what that, you're That's yeah. what I was, because I think temptation is look at this and be like, I haven't had that one moment transformation deliverance thing. Or so, I have, I converted. Yeah. That was the renew, my mind was renewed. I was yeah. converted. Mm -hmm. Now I'm done. Yeah. And so, no, 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 this is a new <laughs> wool. This yeah. is a, and that goes back to some of the other passages we talk about, yeah. right, where Paul says, I don't consider I've made it my own. So yeah, exactly. I, I mean, literally the next, ver like, literally the next yeah. reading ties so well into that. Yep. And that's what I was trying to get at. That like, I got you. the okay. renewal is an ongoing Going. transformation. I'm tracking. Um, yeah, I which, would 100% agree with that. Yeah. Yep. It's got to be an ongoing. And like you said, that leads right into Philippians 3. Mm -hmm. uh, beautiful passage talking about, you know, verses that we've shared numerous times that do not mm -hmm. do not consider I've already made it my own, but I press on, I press on to the goal, the prize of the upward call. Mm -hmm. But then even earlier at the start of Philippians, right? Philippians 3 verse two, he says, look out for the dogs, look out for mm -hmm. the evildoers, look out for those, what is it? That's sober-mindedness. Mm -hmm. that that's minds prepared for action. That's mm -hmm. minds ready for this thing. And so yeah. again, I think Philippians three is just a very straightforward yep. chapter. Very, very straightforward. right thinking. Mm -hmm. I would agree. And uh, yeah, yeah, there's not really much yep. to say about it except memorize it because that's the whole vision. It's the whole <laughs> must pursue. Uh, and even, you know, our citizenship is in heaven. So mm -hmm. that reminder that our citizenship is in heaven, which goes to the one passage I read from Timothy where it says a soldier doesn't get entangled in mm -hmm. civilian pursuits. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm a soldier of heaven, I am yeah. not a citizen of earth. Mm -hmm. So my, like, my heavenly nature like the <laughs> heavenly aspect of who i am yeah should prevent me from getting entangled mm. in earthly things not ignorant of earthly things yeah. not unaware we're called to be aware we're called to pay attention we're called to be alert and called we're, to be engaged we're called to be engaged we're called to mourn with those who mm -hmm. mourn so yeah. i should be aware mm -hmm. of the earthly things going on around me mm. they should not dictate my behavior and they should not entangle me. They should not entangle me. Yeah. They should not determine my spirit. They should not determine mm. my outlook, my perspective. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think that's the key word there is that entanglement. Mm. Yeah. Um, not yeah. just awareness of. Mm -hmm. Yep. But that goes back to sober mindedness. Be in control of your thoughts, mm -hmm. not letting external situations dictate your thoughts. Yeah. Uh, then you yep. have Colossians 2 and 3. Um, man, great, again, great chapters. Not a ton to add or unpack. Because I think it is pretty straightforward. Like Colossians 2 8, see to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit. Mm -hmm. Right? Like captive yeah. by philosophy. Yeah. If you're not mentally prepared, you're yep. going to lose the fight. Yep. Uh, Colossians 3 2, set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. Mm -hmm. You know, and then it goes on in Colossians 3 to talk about what old passions look like and things mm -hmm. not to get entangled in. Mm -hmm. and so again, I think it all comes back to that determination yeah what is my mind determined by what are my mm. thoughts determined by when action comes am i ready for it because i've prepared myself mentally mm -hmm. or am i caught unaware because i'm in blissful ignorance mm. and i'm neglecting my responsibility as a soldier of heaven yeah yeah i think it's good i mean uh i mean you pretty much answered the question the philippians one um but yeah he says set your heart on minds above set your m mind on wait but set your heart on <laughs> Things above, not minds above, and set your mind on things above in yeah. Colossians 3, which isn't an, an ignorance to the things below. Nope. And it's not a disengagement to things below. It's just not getting caught up and entangled. It's not a and, submission to them. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's, yeah. I thought you you got it pretty well in Philippians. Very helpful. Very yeah. good. I thought, they, I thought they all flowed well together, and I thought it just continued to, you know, mm -hmm. we started off with Jeremiah 2 and Revelation 2. Mm-hmm. Here are the negative consequences of not doing this. And then in these New Testament writings, uh, you see more of uh, just some continued details, some yeah. continued warnings, encouragements, exhortations, mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah. Um, but really, it just the most important thing we can do is think rightly about God. Yes. And out of that right thinking about God, there should flow right thinking about ourselves mm -hmm. in response to Him and our relationship with others. Absolutely. And it'll be organic. Yep. Because it's being led by the Holy Spirit. Yep. It starts with God. Yep. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. If you have any thoughts, we'd love to hear from you. <laughs> Otherwise, we will see you Sunday. See you then.
Hey everyone, Pastor Sam here. Thanks for joining us for another midweek Bible study video. If you didn't see the sermon that we were talking about, you can find it here. Or if you're interested in more of these midweek Bible study videos and thoughts as Pastor Mario and I break things down, you can find that here as well. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on all our content. Thanks for joining us.